Hi, this is Amy Lewis with Pop Up Tech Talks. I'm here with John. John, can you introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, my name's John Willis. I am about to live on Twitter and I work for Docker. So, uh, one of the privileges of being on the show is I get cool stuff. So, John just handed this book, which I'm excited to dive into. The DevOps Handbook. What's all? What's this all about? Yes. Yeah, so, um, s some of you might not know, a uh, gentleman named Gene Kim um, wrote a book called The Phoenix Project. It was a novel about constraints in IT and software delivery. And uh, early on in that project, before it was completed, it was a novel, and we knew that we had to probably come up with a prescriptive um, artifact because people are going to read a novel and say, "Okay, that's great. Now what do I do?" Yeah. So actually, it took us about five years with myself, Gene Kim, Jez Hombo, kind of the father of continuous delivery, Patrick DeBar, kind of the father of DevOps. Uh, we all worked for about five years on this project, um, and we released it at the end of last year. It's about 48 case studies of mostly enterprises, some web scale, of how they do DevOps, how they do service delivery, how do you get flow, and you know, into the, you know, how, how do you kind of increase speed and um, and increase resilience. And one of the interesting things I wanted to point is, I've been involved in the DevOps movement from the onset, right? So uh, most people say, well, DevOps has been around forever, and yes, I agree. But about six or seven years ago, a gentleman named Patrick DeBois put a stake in the ground, and he called this thing DevOps, and we've all converged and grown kind of virally around it. Um, one of the things we noticed early on is this idea that you could actually, first order principle of applying more software practices to operations. Which was, a, it was a hard, even for me, being an old operations person. But the second thing that we started picking up really early is this idea that if you built infrastructure and you had a certain culture, collaborative culture, you could actually go faster and be more resilient. And so this actually breaks that traditional iron triangle of, you know, you can go fast or you can be resilient. And, and in, in the book, we've got 48 case studies of companies like, you know, Disney and Nordstrom, 125-year-old companies, Target, that actually are telling the story of actually going faster and being more resilient. And you know, and that's kind of the magic of DevOps. You got this, you embrace culture and behavior patterns, and you actually can put in these automated practices that actually, you know, I mean, it kind of breaks the whole idea like that we've learned that, you know, dev ops, you know, dev fast, ops slow. Um, we, we, we're shattering that. That was going to be my next question. So you've shattered yeah, one I one myth. <laughs> I like to do that. <laughs> you've, you've taken and demystified one myth. What's another, you think, common misperception for us lay people or people who are afraid to take this step? Or um, how do you take it from buzzword to practice? Give us some, some practical There's tips. There's a lot. I mean, again, you know, I, this is a really good book, and I'm just one quarter of an author, and the other three authors are amazing. So this book, I will tell you in all truth, is an amazing book that answers a lot of questions. One of the big ones is this idea of a unicorn. You know, we, we see companies like Facebook and Google and we, we look at them as the unicorns and people say, well, I'm an enterprise company, I can't do that. And the truth of the matter is, if you nail the culture and you nail the automation and you get a collaborative nature, and again, these case studies show that, I think, I think Nordstrom is a 125 year old company that switched from an ROI based to a speed based model, right? So this idea that, yeah, well, only the Netflix and Googles can do this, this kind of unicorn um, pattern, it's not true. That, that not in our yard. Your point yeah, is everybody. And we have to hire, oh, we couldn't hire the people that Facebook hires, therefore we can't do it. And um, you know, there's a gentleman named Adrian Schaefer, a good friend of mine, he wrote a presentation about three or four years ago, said there is no talent shortage. And the theme behind it was, you get more power of your people if you learn how to become a learning organization. So you don't have to go out and hire like $300,000 a year people. I mean, you can, but you can get more value if you just teach people internally how to become learners and, and make an organization that is focused on learning in a learning organization. What is it that uh, that old saying of what if you teach people in these new methods and they leave and the, per the alternative yeah. is what if you don't and they stay? <laughs> well, and that's the other thing too. I think the, the enterprises are learning that um, embracing technology like Docker, DockerCon, or um, that, you know, that, like how do you, somebody asked Adrian Krakow, he was the architect of Netflix, like how do you hire all those people? And he says, we hire them from you. you know, right? and, and the point being now, there's a lot of companies that are, you know, companies like Target and uh, Verizon that are, um, that are showing that if you can come here, you can work on open source, 
you can use bleeding edge technology, and we have we're building a very collaborative environment. So people are now having to move to Silicon Valley. You know, Target, for example, it's in Brooklyn, Minnesota. Like, don't Uber from the airport to Brooklyn, Minnesota. You will go broke. Um, <laughs> But they're keeping people there because they're using bleeding edge technology. They're building, you know, they, they do the lean enterprise. They chef things, they docker things. Um, you know, they're using Hadoop. And uh, so people are staying there and they're coming there and they're, they're, they're opting not to move to Silicon Valley, you know? It's such a great message. Thank you so much, John, yeah. for your time. Thank you for uh, inviting me, yeah. And we'll see you next time on Pop-Up Tech Talks.